Namaste, everybody, and good evening to all of you in India. And uh, here it is, uh, morning 7.30 a.m. in Chicago. We have another interesting matter to ponder, and that is ascent through understanding. Obviously, the word ascent here means a certain rise in maturity, rise in matter of being more human, rise as per what they call spiritual standards. In this world, people ascend going by worldly standards. This, there goes the expression somebody's journey from rags to riches. Rags to riches is more about ascending on the scale of wealth. In the corporate world, people get promoted, they rise and rise. That also is an ascent, but that's not our topic in this session. In fact, referring to the there is a very popular management book by <clears throat> uh, I think Marshall Goldsmith and the title is interesting. What got you here won't take you there. What got you here won't take you there. What it means is in that context of ascent, certain qualifications, certain skills might bring somebody to a certain high level in a company. But Marshall Goldsmith talks about how to go even higher, certain human qualities are required. In that sense, Mentioning that book is not totally out of place here because that book is more about growing as a good human being. Therefore, while finance skill, technical knowledge and certain aggressiveness with regard to scenarios might help us in the corporate world also to come up to some point, later on, to really win the love and goodwill of all those who work with us, we need to have certain human qualities. If you get a chance, please read that book, What Got You Here Won't Take You There by Marshall Goldsmith. So that is also an ascent, and that ascent has two parts. One is rising in power, position, net worth, etc. The second part is, in fact, very close to what we are trying to talk about. Now, plunging to our own chosen theme, ascending through understanding, where knowledge fails. This distinction between what knowledge does and what understanding does, insights do, is very important in our getting to uh, grasp the teachings. The world goes after knowledge. The world prides over having greater and greater information at its fingertips. Everybody is proud of academic qualifications or the number of countries they travel number of people whom they know, number of languages that they know, and so on. There used to be an old joke. Somebody said, uh, our... In those seven languages, one, you know, so languages or that for that matter, science and maths and geography and history and economics, you and I can gather vast amount of knowledge. But I must not go to much digression. 
in the so called inner journey also we are very likely to go for knowledge knowing more so called books of wisdom knowing more of some sanskrit or hebrew or arabic chants as religions would present them in fact many a popular speaker in the so called spiritual world is able to impress large numbers of people by reciting the right shloka or mantra or you know sura in islam i guess and parts of torah in the judaism or jewish tradition and in christianity too they have what is called some gregorian chants they are supposed to be very similar to vedic chants you and i respect in certain contexts somebody who claims she or he knows the whole rigveda by heart somebody has memorized the entire rigveda we say wow all this wow and all this adoration are not totally out of place but they have the serious limitation that they do not ensure they do not guarantee coming upon love and as krishna ji would especially highlight freedom from fear can we say somebody who has done phd and post doctoral research and is guiding many students in their phd etc is more fearless as compared with some villager who has not gone beyond third standard in primary school obviously this matter of being free from fear is an entirely different ball game therefore we are more concerned now with being free from fear being free from insecurity being free from certain forms of comparison which either depress us or make us feel elated and there is goes of course in modern times the so called rat race of competition people are vying with each other even in this chandrayaan 3 that india prides over the achievement that is i think just 24 hours old now probably many of you too at this time yesterday were glued to the internet site some youtube video and you too like i did here must have experienced a certain happiness that happiness is all right but we need to introspect do we upon being happy about the achievement of indian scientists isro upon uh, experiencing happiness do we also entertain some thoughts of uh, our country now will teach a lesson maybe to other countries or other countries now know who we are and so on that kind of being you know competitive trying to dominate over others and so on is unfortunately not very healthy therefore it is a razor's walk or what do you call it walking on a razor katopanishad has an expression kshurasya dhara kshurasya dhara kshura is the razor that a barber kshaurika holds in his hands kshurasya dhara is the expression walking on a razor's edge in the use of a razor if we are a little careless we bleed like that as even we gain skills we master various subjects there is always the risk of our being either proud or our suffering from low self esteem 
when we are not able to be as good in the subject as somebody else. Even speaking on spiritual subjects, writing on spiritual subjects, being a speaker at some conferences, as many of you might know, my U.S. tour this time began with just simple participation in the Parliament of the World's Religions in Chicago. There too, it is the same challenge. And the purpose of that Parliament of the World's Religions was to promote greater harmony between religions. But as we moved around there, we did see some of us clearly saw that some representatives of religious organizations from the world over had clear agenda of promoting themselves and even suppressing or speaking negatively about certain other religions and so on. Nothing to worry, it is nothing new. That is how the human mind operates. Some of them who, let us say, had very negative views of another religion, which they expressed quite openly, were very knowledgeable. Therefore, we say in that context that knowledge does not cause, does not bring about assent. In fact, there is an old saying, probably by Lao Tzu in Dao De Ching or one of those works. Knowledge is a matter of adding daily, whereas wisdom is a matter of subtracting. Wisdom which can bring to us freedom from fear, wisdom which can bless us with love in our hearts, is a matter of letting go. In the Eastern spiritual traditions, much is said about the greatness of Tyaga. In the Gita, there is a very crisp expression, Tyagat Shanti Anantaram. Anantaram there means without a gap. Antara is gap. Anantara is without a gap, without a time interval. Something that happens with no time interval, no lapse of time. It goes so, so well with Krishnaji's teachings where he, in a very profound way, denounced the role of time. He said time has nothing to do with the, you know, with freedom, with coming upon freedom. There's a very difficult concept or very difficult part of the teaching for a lot of us. How Time has no role to play at all. And that's what I guess Sri Krishna also meant by using that adverb, anantaram, with no lapse of time. You let go, tyaga, and there is shanti. Tyaga shanti anantaram. In the Gita, chapter 12, verse 12. We have this said from time immemorial. It's in letting go. It is a matter of subtraction that we grow, we ascend rather than descend. Descend is coming down. Ascend is going up. Therefore, many a time when you and I engage in pondering, studying the teachings of various illumined people, whatever the tradition be, we tend to forget the main purpose. For these benefits that knowledge gives to us are very tempting. When we become knowledgeable, we get recognized in the world. If you are the author of some book which is selling very well, it gives you a kick it gives you a sense of, ah, I have arrived somewhere. And from a higher point of view, that sense of I have arrived somewhere, I have become somebody, I have finally become something. Now my enemies would know my worth. Now my family would finally say, okay, our daughter, our son has 
finally achieved something we are so concerned about our image we are so concerned about how people think of us people talk about us and what people think of us uh, influences what we ourselves think of ourselves then they are interrelated through the medium of how we think of ourselves we evaluate or judge what others talk about us i think i am a great person then i hear that somebody made some negative comments about me then it hurts me more than otherwise because my own opinion of who i am and the opinion expressed by that tom dick or harry uh, about me are at variance and something in me resists it oh it is so painful it is so painful to have enough of wealth enough of education enough of even good physical health but suffer from jealousy suffer from inferiority complex suffer from the feeling that no i am not good yet i need to reach somewhere and so on the whole world worships knowledge that is a sad side of this world the world you know, goes into billions and billions of dollars investing in pursuit of knowledge people travel far and wide to get a degree from oxford or cambridge from sorbonne in paris or harvard or mit in boston and so on and so forth there are but all of them typically have a huge amount of financial side to them we know that therefore in that sense we would dare say the world worships knowledge we they invest and later on they hope to earn also what they earn wisdom no way they earn power and position parents want their sons and daughters to earn very well to get a wonderful career therefore it is like a mad rush towards the so called professional courses but of course one in a thousand goes halfway then someone like jay krishna murthy comes into their life then they realize oh, what am i doing this pursuit of knowledge this going after more degree and maybe some you know very lucrative job is not going to make me happy then some of them even leave everything and they settle for a simple life they settle for maybe just uh, being at uh, one of the krishna murthy campuses and not bothered about status power glitter glamour and so on so that is a major milestone in the life of any of us for that matter so mundane subjects you know, economics or history and so on but also of religious scriptures knowledge of shastras as we call it it is actually memory it is past experience stored in the brain collected in the brain as we collect store more and more knowledge we have many things on our fingertips we are you know, able to give out information in a jiffy that does not mean we are ascending we ascend when there is shedding or letting go of fear and in one of the passages i read and that prompted me to think of uh, sharing some thoughts on this topic so in that passage krishna ji says this ascent or ascending requires understanding of pleasure and pain nowadays there is so much literature available 
on this uh, hormone called uh, dopamine. Somebody is into coffee, tea, into alcohol, into smoking. Somebody is into some other form of pleasure. Very soon that person does not understand. That person doesn't know at all that it's not the coffee, it's not the tea, it's not the alcohol or some other pleasure. But all those external things do is secretion of dopamine. And then there is a one-to-one -one connection made in his brain. He or she thinks, I have coffee, I will be happy. But actually, coffee is just an excuse there. So, if one can be free of all these external factors which stimulate the secretion of dopamine, and if happiness can be without these external factors, how free one would be. So, in both pleasure and in pain, Pleasure and Krishnaji actually says pleasure and desire. That's another wonderful topic. Perhaps these are the topics understanding which one can actually uh, cross major milestones. Rather than just collecting more information, one has to go to the depth of how desire operates. When there is desire operating in us, we are actually deceiving ourselves. Thought visualizes various objects. A beautiful car in which I sit and drive. Visualization. A, a wonderful, delicious piece of food. So the thought of food right away may cause saliva to come in my mouth. I think some psychologist had conducted an experiment, a famous experiment in history of psychology, where to a number of uh, rats, he daily gave you know, some delicious food. But before giving food, he rang a bell. The rats would hear the bell and come there. There would be very delicious food for them. And after a number of days, he rang the bell, did not place any food over there. Though there was no food at all, the moment the rats came there, uh, hearing the bell, all of them had saliva, salivation in their mouths. See how the brain works. It's the brain, it is the mechanism in the brain that causes very many emotions in us. And that emotion is in turn activated by a thought, by a belief. So, thought and emotion. Emotion and thought. Between them, there is a dynamics. And you, you and I get lost in thought and emotions. And But imagine that the object outside is critical. The object outside is not critical, not crucial. We don't have to depend on the outer objects. We don't have to depend on somebody's praise for us. We don't have to depend on the image that people have of us. But this is easier said than done. So, knowledge does not bring about assent. We need to seriously ask how we may understand pleasure, understand desire, and what love is. What actually love is. You and I are so concerned with our health. Today we spend a lot of money, especially as we get older, on various medicines, injections, and even you know some steroids, some other kind of lot of artificialities enter our life and we are helpless about them. I'm saying this because more than physical health, more than so-called mental health, the 
the coming upon a state of love is so much more valuable. Probably it would be right to say when we are in a state of love, a whole lot of even ailments can just reduce on their own. All of you are much aware of so much talk these days going on about diseases being psychosomatic. And the point that deserves to be mentioned here is psychosomatic, psycho being mind and soma being body, is both ways. Body influences the mind, the mind influences the body. There is a relationship in both directions. So, in this context, love, which in yet another mystical statement Krishna ji calls not of thought. Love is not of thought. Love is not of thought is a very profound statement. Love is not of thought. Love is not of words. When there is love, certain thoughts, certain words may rise. But love is not as though contained in thought or contained in word. Therefore, in context of good health too, in the context of well-being, nothing is a greater health than being in a state of love. And love and fear are antonyms. The antonym of love is not hatred, as is popularly believed. The antonym of love is fear. When there is fear, there cannot be love. And when there is true love, there cannot be fear. Hatred is something different. Hatred is like a further development. When we don't have love, we live in fear. Following that, hatred also raises its head. Thus, in this discussion, this evening at your end, what is most important is to be attentive, to be aware of our old urges. We just want to put another feather on our cap by telling a friend, you know, I read this book, you know, I watched that video. You know, did you read my article? I wrote this, I wrote that, and so on. There is an urge in us to let, to actually give an auto suggestion to ourselves as the our self worth increases by having knowledge, giving lectures, writing articles, going to some conferences, maybe international conferences, etc., gives to us a certain sense of pride, but spiritually all of them mean nothing at all. That is knowledge, that is power, that is wealth, external wealth. But ascending, ascending is through understanding. In love, in freedom from fear, in true humility, in inner silence, there is a certain ascent. Otherwise, we are where we were all along. There is no growth at all. Let me pause here. I would love to hear uh, comments by others, Harshadji and others. And um, uh, since I have another session, I will be, I'll be there up to your 7 p.m. Namaste. Okay. Harsad Parik, sir, would you please like to make a comment on it? Then Dinesh Wagner. Harsad, sir. Uh, yes. Are you able to hear my voice? It's a little broken, uh, but we are able to hear you. My voice? Okay, okay. <clears throat> and uh, you talk about love. 
I'm very happy and uh, about knowledge. So the, <coughs> I, <coughs> if you don't hear my voice properly, please let me know because I may not know. Okay, right. So this uh, you're talking about love and knowledge that reminds me of Kabir who said, Uthi padi padi jag mua, pandit hua na koi, dai akshar prem ka pade so pandit hoi. So if we know a lot, it means nothing. This knowledge can be a burden also. Because uh, when one pandit, he wanted to have a debate with Kabir. And so he, he came in a carriage full of books. And uh, he, he did not know where Kabir was living. So he met Kabir's daughter and asked where is Kabir lives. So the daughter said, Kabir lives on the top of a hill. And how will you go with all this, your knowledge? to meet Kabir. <clears throat> so uh, knowledge is very dry. It, uh, it may be useful sometimes if it is a scientific knowledge, uh, we can do certain things with this knowledge. Uh, it can make our life more comfortable, but uh, knowledge in spirituality, it doesn't bring happiness or love or freedom. And uh, Krishnamurti says that knowledge is a burden. I would say that even if we know a lot about Krishnamurti teachings, that can also become a burden. And we have to really forget uh, and look at our mind as how it is unfolding in the present moment. And that means to be in touch with what is happening within us without uh, inter interpreting it or interfering with whatever is coming. So it is a moment by moment awareness of what is happening. And this awareness is coming out from the plane of thinking and feeling and looking at it very clearly. So this is what I feel. Now I was thinking about there is an <clears throat> intellectual understanding, understanding the meaning of the words, ideas, and then there is a real understanding. And the real understanding is something which makes us really happy and free. Intellectual understanding it it becomes a burden. And even if we talk about, about intellectually, it is like an artificial flower in that there is no real goodness and love by just giving an intellectual talk. But if we speak from our own understanding, whatever little knowledge we may have, but I think it conveys something. I was looking at the word understanding and like uh, it is like standing under. So I was thinking that if I am standing under a tree, maybe and if I touch the tree, I feel what the tree feels. I look more carefully at the life, at the leaves, Maybe that is much better than gathering all the information about the tree. And so that is to look at a tree or a mountain or a human being without the knowledge. That is a wonderful thing. Uh, in that there is a freshness, newness. And here I'm here at Vasant Vihar and uh, I walk on the green lawn with a bare foot early in the morning, and then there's the dew drops, 
and feel the grass, the coolness of it, touch the trees, and the mind becomes very, very quiet. So really the nature, uh, if we can really look at the nature, not gather knowledge about the nature, like many biologists, they gather a lot of knowledge. Of course, it may be useful in having some me making medicine out of plants, but um, just looking without the knowledge is a, is, it's wonderful in that there's a freshness, newness, and uh, that the knowledge cannot give us uh, that kind of freshness. And uh, understanding is like a perception. The perception is the action. So a real understanding is which makes us free, as you say, and to have a humility, goodness, love, that kind of understanding is the real understanding, intellectual understanding. It may be all right for the profession of a scholar or a professor, but real understanding amidst the real feeling to know the essence behind a thing or behind life, that is what makes our life very happy, healthy, and creative. So this is what I have to say right now. Thank you. Wagner. Very nice. Wagner. Are you able to hear me, sir? Yeah, we are very well able to hear. Yeah. Today's uh, topic is ascending through understanding. Here, there is less clarity, but when we say where knowledge fails, means definitely we are talking in context of spirituality. But let us not go into merits and demerits of the various people who, what, what they said. Let us go on the practical side. We see that ascending through knowledge is also must in the, uh, in the worldly affairs. One has to earn his bread and butter, one has to grow, one has to become. I am talking of the common person or the common students or common uh, this thing. So they have to earn their bread and butter, they have to uh, uh, earn some money and all that and uh, uh, food, uh, cloth and shelter, what we say. They should have that. So for that, knowledge is a must. We all agree. There is, I think there is no, two doubt, no doubt about it. So uh, here, knowledge is very important. Now, when we say we want to go to, we, we want to know uh, or go into depth of spirituality. There, if at all we want to go into depth of spirituality, first we should have a uh, external or internal superficial order. This superficial order means your thought process should be very clear. You should have the clarity about your uh, vision and goals, etc. You should have, um, you should know uh, what are the your liabilities, what are your, um, uh, what you have to do, what uh, your assignments in the work and all that. And you have to make an order in that. And for that also, knowledge is a must. Uh, Krishna Ji has used the word right thinking. So what is right thinking? So right thinking will come only through the knowledge only. So in my views, first step is this uh, internal order, the superficial order or external order. If that order is not there, do what may you. You will not get the, you will not ascend in our, um, uh, what, what today we are talking about. You will not ascend. So this is the first step. It, it, it should be very clear. Now, when we go, go further, once our, um, uh, this uh, order is there, then we start thinking about the other things, deeper things, deeper issues. So when we go to that, then the, uh, the word understanding comes. In most of the cases, when we start from the worldly affairs, understanding is clearly means experience. For worldly matters, it is clear that experience is equivalent to your understanding. 
no understanding uh, intellectual understanding or emotional understanding or senses understanding is complete without any experience i may go th theoretically about a machine i am engineer basically so i may go theoretically about a machine but unless i have got the feel which uh, harsha sir was saying unless i am having a feel experience uh, of that and i am uh, uh, through with that experience of uh, say running the machine it will not be the experience will not be complete and the understanding will not be complete so at this level understanding clearly is equivalent to the uh, experiencing of the things let us go further now jk has talked has given understanding a different meaning altogether J jk says understanding is neither intellectual nor emotional nor verbal non sentimental is definitely is talking in context of uh, spirituality nor uh, sentimental it is not of logic and you must have logic and intellect here also he says you must have logic and intellect when you are emotionally excited there is no question of understanding understanding comes only when the intellect and emotions are in abeyance understanding comes only when the intellect and emotions are in abeyance when your mind is very quiet neither saying it right or wrong neither accepting or rejecting neither confirming um, confirming nor nor not confirming uh, it is then when the mind is very quiet then you say i see it okay. understanding uh, takes place at that time in a flash that's what he said and it is not a process of time so it is very clear what understanding jk means is Uh, when he is referring to the spiritual uh, context in spiritual context so we have to be very clear what are the, the how the word is used and how their uh, different uh, meanings are coming in this so first when you say information knowledge even if, if we go for the shastra which uh, chedan uh, swami ji was uh, referring to you have to go through shastras only to start with unless um, uh, unless you go through the shastra how you can uh, have the initial uh, order in your mind or uh, initial uh, your uh, uh, preparation of the mind so you have to go through the shastra later on you may understand go deeper and um, uh, understand from the other people what is the meaning of this and then uh, you can go the deeper in that so it is very clear first information then knowledge then it will become your knowledge and then it will become your understanding so and after understanding under what understanding gives you basically in my views understanding gives gives you the power of action power of action right action means per, per, when we say perception is action so at that level it gives you the um, uh, power of action but whether you want to opt for it or not suppose i am having a dispute with any uh, uh, suppose a pelwan <laughs> and i i know that uh, i am right and i have to take an action and uh, i have to slap on his uh, face but can i so wisdom comes there in picture wisdom is actually in my views after the truth when you see the truth of a thing krishna ji also uh, says that when you say see a truth of uh, a thing then that truth becomes uh, then from that uh, you get the uh, right perception and that right perception is basically converted into uh, wisdom so what he says wisdom is daughter of the truth and intelligence is daughter of the wisdom so when you are having initial order when you are having a total understanding of the or structure of mind etc whatever the other thing we have already discussed in detail what uh, he says then after that your this uh, wisdom portion comes and when wisdom is there mind is quiet and uh, you know the structure of many things uh, all the things almost which is related to you related to your integrity then probably the um, uh, you may go for the then may, probably the intelligence may come into the picture so this is what my understanding is and um, here a yeah, one more important point he has clearly said that
just a moment intelligence is the integration of reason and love but there can be intelligence only when there is self knowledge means one has to go through self knowing and self knowledge then only he can have the uh, deep understanding of the total process of oneself here he has used the deep understanding word so deep after deep understanding the wisdom comes into picture and with, after wisdom there is a scope for intelligence coming into the picture which he says that you keep your uh, door, uh, windows open this is what my views are thank yeah. you thank you thank you at the thank moment you. thank you thank you sir thank you Chidanand ji, would you please say something for six minutes? Uh, I don't have to take all the six minutes, but uh, 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 he, uh, Dinesh ji rightly began saying how shastras or the scriptures or books of wisdom have to be the beginning. I agree with him in the sense 999 out of 1000 people get a lot of uh, basic ideas some inspiration and uh, the fuel to get going through the famous uh, scriptures or books of wisdom, writings of wise people and so on. Therefore, or, uh, when we look around, yes, uh, shastras or scriptures or holy books uh, play a major role in this world. But technically speaking, uh, perhaps that is uh, not required. Though the ground reality is, or going by what is happening around is, yes, everybody begins with some works. Once in a while, we meet somebody who said who had not read anything at all and certain works of Krishna Ji, which also he did not look at as a holy book or a book of wisdom, just chanced upon taking a look at some observations. In fact, one such person was Kabir Jaitirtha. <laughs> once he told me, Nothing else had attracted him. <laughs> he just uh, uh, came across teachings of Krishna Murti, and that's it. Then he was just, uh, you know, fond of that particular literature. Uh, probably Harshadji also did not study any other uh, holy books, I guess. Though you took some interest, Kabir, etc., you quote. But I guess so there are very rarely a couple of people who headlong went into... Krishnaji's teachings, which are not an authoritative work, which are not like many other scriptures, which are more of the nature of questioning whatever we are doing. So it, they stand apart. Krishnaji's books, though they are also books, they stand apart, I would uh, admit. They stand apart in their quality or in their, you know, thrust in their nature. So that's what I will say, and I will uh, hear one or two other people. Maybe before leaving, I will again say something for two minutes. Mm -hmm. It's breakfast time for me. I have to take breakfast, then I go for another Sanskrit class at, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you are 7.30 mm -hmm. uh, p.m. Can I make any comment on this? No, no, please, please, Bhagmare, let others say, please. Hmm? Next one, sir. Sir, may, may give yeah, my please. please, please, please go ahead. Sir, Prasad. it's an excellent lecture mm. talk by Swamiji. Mm. Particularly, I am attracted by two of his statements. One is that knowledge is addition, whereas wisdom is subtraction. If we ponder over this statement, I think it takes one to the essence of Krishnaji. Because Krishnaji's teaching is only peeling onions layer by layer. That is, he peels off everything. Ultimately, what remains is nothing. Or what remains is, yes, Swamiji said, Love. So, to that extent, I think this observation of Swamiji takes one to the essence of Krishna. Because knowledge is addition. Yesterday we saw Chandrayaan 3. Like all of us, I also saw the TV. And what struck me was the amount of knowledge collectively 
gathered at that particular ISRO office, ISRO site. So much knowledge. But what is that knowledge? That is all knowledge about the moon, the earth, the machines, the rockets, the landers, the rovers, etc. <coughs> so, it gives no self-knowledge. All the scientists, while they are performing a wonderful job, possibly they have the same weaknesses which we have. They are motivated by the praise of the Prime Minister, their hope of increments, things like that. And they will they will have all those biological problems which you and I have. So it doesn't really give us much comfort. And Krishnaji said in one of his uh, talks, there is uh, I mean, it is it is all top heavy with the thought, intellection, and he used the word mentation. So it is all top heavy with mentation. And ideas don't give you action. Ideas give you further ideas. So he said that, uh, I mean, uh, he, he meant that uh, one all our <laughs> university life is only this type of thing that is gathering knowledge so that you get a good job, you go up in life and all that. That is what parents want, what teachers want, what the candidate wants. And we all went through the same thing. It is not as though we started reading Krishnaji in the beginning. I mean, we all went through that careerism and uh, that that thing. So that is that. But then this question of starting with Vedas and all those uh, scriptures, so far as I am concerned, I don't think it has any value. Not that I didn't read anything. I did read something. Not like Mr. Wagmare or even like uh, Harsaji. But I also read a, 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 a smattering of scriptures. So, something is there, but basically, once you come in touch with Krishna Ji, you have to start with freedom. Freedom means freedom from everything, even from <laughs> Vedic scriptures. Because when you start with the Vedas, you may have to start with Bible or with Quran also. Yeah. My point is, you don't require anything. There is no point in starting with uh, putting on shackles and then shedding them. You don't have to. I mean, if somebody is interested, that is a different matter. I am interested in novels and so you can also be interested in Vedas. That is uh, how I look at it. Uh, I think that is enough, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, just one Mama, minute, sir. You wanted to go earlier. Just, just so one please. minute. Yes, sir, just yes. one minute. Uh, okay. There is an excellent comment by Swamiji. He said, the antonym of love is not hatred. It is fear. This is also an excellent perception. Thank you. That's all. Wagmare, please finish. Wagmare, please. Because you have to leave. What, Important yeah, things what I, would, I would, yeah. What I would like to say to Swamiji, let us go into deep uh, about the question of uh, this um, uh, indigenity. One says that uh, he, is, he is interested in Vedas. Another person says he is not interested in Vedas. Third person says that he is interested in Bhajan. Fourth person says that he is interested in some Japa and all that. So, from where this difference is coming? Basically, ultimate authority is his inner core. This Swamiji, I would like to discuss this point with the Swamiji. Ultimately, what your inner core is demanding, that you have to fulfill. Ego doesn't know, ego is ignorant, but there is, a, um, there is a push from behind to ego that he likes this or he, he has got, uh, got hangering for this, he has to go for this and this is 
when when that thing is completed or fulfilled the inner inner core says that yes you have got this um, uh, what you say ascending or this uh, position <laughs> or uh, whatever it is the actual thing is and this hap- uh, this happens this is a normal feature this happens right from the your physical body to your spirit- uh, spiritual spiritual um, uh, heights spiritual body spiritual uh, this uh, physical body says that i want water water you Va- just, just I am finishing. Yes, shortly I am finishing. Sir, sir Chidanand, shortly I am finishing. You have to talk with Chidanand. So let let him comment. He will comment for two minutes only. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, I do agree with Dinesh ji. There are yeah. various urges. We are all in a quest. We are all looking for uh, some higher meaning to life, and therefore, as I earlier also admitted. even 999 out of 1000 is an understatement you know one in a million might not need the uh, guidance <clears throat> from other sources but all others uh, first chance upon some interesting uh, teachings in other books and that's when they go and then somewhere uh, they may uh, begin to understand that accumulation of concepts etc doesn't take them anywhere or it it has limited value it may bring about some changes uh, but it may not give them that freedom lasting freedom then they they begin this letting go otherwise it is we want to know even uh, we all have curiosity somebody says uh, some out of the way healing method or you know what is that there are so many uh, teachings these days uh, you know from the sunshine or maybe from diet or from from you know magnetic healing and so on and you and i get curious so oh, is that so can that help me because we are in search for help therefore i do agree with the dinesh ji that we We learn from scriptures, and at some point, that that understanding comes to us. That not by collecting knowledge, but examining and letting go, that it happens. Thank you. Thank you very much. So goodbye, Chidan. Goodbye. Please have a breakfast, and then we will talk. Yeah. Harshad sir, you wanted to say something, and then. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Are you able to hear my voice? Yeah. Are you able to hear my voice? Yeah, yeah, we can hear your voice. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, I had read when I was in school and college. I had read Upanishads. I was very much interested in Ram Krishna, and then uh, Raman Maharshi and Osho and many people. Mm, and then later on, I came to Krishna Murthy. and uh, when i started reading krishnamurti i begin to see myself as i am very very clearly and then it really became very interesting so um on in krishnamurti i found that he is talking about what is happening within us moment by moment and then i found very i could see myself very clearly and that begin to dissolve many of the problems which i was creating by myself and then i also feel that krishna murti's uh, teachings one can also gather it as a knowledge and then that knowledge can prevent in looking at oneself very clearly so this teachings whether it's a buddha's teaching or krishna teachings are like a boat which can take you from this bank of the river to the other bank we don't put with us on our head so as long as we have not really seen clearly our own mind this teachings will attract us very, very much but when we begin to see our own mind very clearly without reading anything then we don't need any book 
because the book is being written within us every day, every moment. So when we are able to read the book of our own life clearly, we don't need any any teacher, any teaching, and uh, but we can still read just for the sake of interest, but not in order to become free. Only when we are able to look in silence at our own mind clearly, then there is nothing to understand, only to see. And that seeing is what we call insight or perception, and that dissolves the problem. Even if anger is coming, that anger is to be seen when it is arising and not later on analyzing it. So I find in Krishnamurti teachings that he is talking about what is happening in each one of us. And if we are sensitive and if we can really watch our own mind instead of gathering knowledge of Krishnamurti teaching, <coughs> then we don't even need Krishnamurti's teachings. This is what I feel right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Raj Shekhar, please. Raj Shekhar, please. Uh, namaste to all. Am I audible? Yeah, what do you yeah. uh, I tell you when uh, Prasad was uh, talking, uh, yes, he mentioned about yesterday's Chandrayaan. I too also have watched it with uh, uh, happiness, no doubt. But he mentioned that uh, most of the scientists, maybe for the increment or for some appreciation, uh, might have their knowledge, they have used it. Uh, that is true. Thousands of scientists have participated in that uh, mission. But there are some few who have passion for exploring. The very exploration gives them happiness. And they are the top scientists. The top scientists who have contributed much, their happiness is different. That is what I wanted to say. Uh, and another thing, in this aspect, uh, once uh, Jitu Krishnamurti himself somewhere uh, commented, I may not be sure, but that is what I have read, that the Chandrayaan people are going to Chandrayaan and so many things exploring in the nature, uh, but when they want to put their flag there and all that is okay, uh, but what for? What for they are doing? Is there any use of uh, for the humanity? They are spending taxpayers' money. That was his comment. If you go deeply, uh, no doubt, uh, it is our passion or something to explore. But strictly speaking, how it is going to help humanity? That is also a, a profound statement. That is what just I wanted to mention. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, it, it is over. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else wanted to comment? Pradeep Burma has left. Yeah. If Pradeep Burma is there, please ask him. Pradeep Burma is not here, sir. Okay, he has gone. Okay, next Sunday he has got a lecture. So that's why I wanted to say him about something about the lecture. Okay. Is there anyone other wanted to comment? Yes, sir. If nobody is there. Yeah. Do you wanted to make a comment, Prasad sir? Arun, no, yes, sir. Want to say, sir. Uh, Arun, Arun, Arun first and then Prasad. Arun first, please, Arun. Yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. So actually, my question is like, um, there should be some kind of ground for common understanding, no? Because we are all human beings. So how do we reach that place where there is a common uh, way we understand? Because now if you see, uh, language is helping us to, you know, understand. Uh, I mean, like some some co common thing is there across all the, um, I mean, throughout the world. So, um, how do we reach a st state where uh, that can be achieved? You know, through uh, 
something we, uh, for a change to happen, but there should be some common ground. I'm having that doubt. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else wanted to comment? <coughs> Prasad, sir. Prasad, Prasad sir. Please. Sir, what I meant was ultimately what Harshadji has said. What matters is reading your own book. That is the most essential thing. Of course, I mean, we don't uh, survive only by eating the staple food. We eat so many other things. Like that, we can also read so many scriptures. We, do, we don't have to mention them each by name. We can read them for interest, for time pass, for anything. But basically, the core of the problem is choiceless awareness of yourself and of the world, both. Both the world and the yourself. And that is the essential thing. And after that, that observation itself gives you understanding. Mm. Otherwise, there is no sudden dawn of understanding in your mind. You have to undertake this process of choiceless observation. So, that is one thing. And then, <coughs> uh, what is the common understanding, uh, I think, as Mr. Arun Vardha has said, raised the question. Possibly Harshaji will answer that. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Harshad, sir, please answer this. Yeah. Uh, I like to say about the benefit of scientific research on space. We don't know right now what are the advantages, but there could be many advantages. We can find some precious metal on moon or some other planet. So we right now we cannot know the benefit of the research done by scientists, but later on it could be helpful. And the other thing I like to say about right thinking, and um, Dinesh Ji said that for right thinking, we need to have a knowledge and uh, some kind of uh, intellect. But I feel that the right thinking happens when there is a clarity and silence. And I feel that Krishnaji is talking from the direct insight. And he even doesn't know how these words are coming. He's not making any effort to speak in a proper orderly way, but it comes from the freedom. So when there is a freedom, when there is a silence, when there is a clarity, the words will come in a proper way. And it will be very simple. A person can speak very simply, very clearly, and very effectively if the mind of the speaker is very silent and very clear. So he doesn't need a lot of knowledge to, to be clear. Uh, for the clear speaking, clear thinking. Uh, so this is I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Kamlesh Modak, please, please. Arshad sir, uh, Arshad sir, I wanted to say only one thing, that right thinking must be related to the self-knowing and self-knowledge. As uh, right. JK has suggested, that uh, one should have self-knowing first. Then uh, he will be able to uh, see clearly what is coming coming in the form of the word, uh, what, what knowledge from the world is coming or, or some perception about the world is coming. So right thinking must have the basis uh, of the individual particularly, which addresses the individual individuality. And uh, at the same time, the self-knowing part should be completed. So there can be a choiceless awareness in that also. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Prasad, you wanted to still add something on the... Sir, I just yeah. wanted to say, uh, yeah. I wanted to agree with Mr. Kamlesh, Kamlesh yeah. uh, because uh, he said, I mean, there should be a foundation of self-knowledge for right thinking. 
I entirely agree with him. Without that perception of, about yourself, some self-knowledge, supposing I am jealous, I am thinking, if I become aware that I am jealous, my thinking automatically changes. That is, if you observe what is, uh, what is has a way of transforming itself. Uh, it becomes right thinking. So to that extent, in that way, I think Kamalaji is quite right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Is there anything left with this note of right thinking? Should, should I end it? Or somebody else has wanted to make some comment on it? Or I, I must end it. Kamlesh? Yes. Okay. Kamlesh? One minute. Please end it now. 